day to you. You are watching the Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, also called Gaudete Sunday. We are exhorted to rejoice, for the Lord is near. In the Gospel, Jesus sends a word to John the Baptist. The prophecies of old are being fulfilled. The sick found cleansing and healing. The dead were restored to life. The gospel is proclaimed to the poor. His word remains true today, my dear friends. Do we find consolation and joy in our experiences of healing, restoration, and salvation? Do we rejoice when the poor are served? Or are we still looking for other signs? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Joy in God's Surprises. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, a Sunday of rejoicing. But we want to focus on one aspect of joy, the joy that comes from the Lord. Usually, it comes with God's surprising ways. I know that we do not want to be surprised. We want to control our lives. We plan every minute. If a surprise comes as a disruption of our plans, then we don't become joyful. In fact, we get disappointed. Unless the surprise really comes clearly as something advantageous to us. But let us open our eyes of faith. Sometimes even the surprises that don't match our plans are probably the cause of real joy. In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, a people, a people called God's people, Israel, was undergoing exile, the Babylonian captivity. They probably deserved it. Many times they were unfaithful to God. Many times they chose other gods. And they just forgot what God had done for them. And so they, their faith, their cohesion as a people got weak. And the exile was a sign a sign to them that they had really abandoned their God and their identity as God's people. But the prophecy of Isaiah that we just heard comes as a surprise. God will come to rescue His people. God will come to vindicate them. God will save them and God will lead them home. And so from the so-called desert of exile, of shame, of guilt, surprisingly, God will come not to condemn, not to announce to them that they will remain abandoned. No. The surprise is God continues to love them and God will lead them home. And so the images of this desert becoming alive, abundant, flowers will bloom, water will gush forth. All of these point to the surprising action of God who will come to save. And this is a cause of joy because the salvation was undeserved. It's really surprising. We would have expected judgment, condemnation, abandonment. But wow, what adds to the surprise was it was undeserved, the love and mercy of God. And another image that used is how God 
will restore the poor. The blind will recover their sight. The dumb will speak again the praises of God. The lame will walk. The joy comes from God's action towards the poor, the sinner, even the guilty. God will restore them. All those judged by society and counted as nothing, even dirty, God will show His might through them and in them. This is a singular, a unique cause of joy for the mighty God, the mighty God will manifest God's might in the poor and the recovery of the poor's dignity and even productivity fruitfulness now you can say yes but the first reading talks about a beautiful surprise yes but you see the people Israel probably during the exile were just in despair they said we deserve to be punished let us be resigned to this we will die here in exile but then the surprise came God comes to save. And that brings so much joy. But as a surprise, again, we cannot monitor it. We could not uh, manipulate it. That's the meaning of a surprise. It comes when the one who wants to give it, gives it. That's why in the second reading from the letter of St. James, we are told to be patient. To be patient. We are assured by our faith and our hope. The Lord is coming. The Lord is near. Salvation is near. In fact, salvation is within us. But be patient. Just like the farmer who patiently waits for the growth of whatever he had planted. And the, the, the farmer relies on the rain, the snow, the sun. The farmer knows not everything depends on him. In fact, if the farmer loses patience and starts acting, forcing the soil, forcing the rain, forcing the snow, forcing and taking everything into his hands, maybe there will be no harvest. Patience. Patience is an act of humility. Impatience manifests pride, control. Not able to wait for God to act in surprising ways. So joy is usually found among the patient people. The impatient people easily lose their joy because they are so fixated on their plans, their schedule, their time frame. And if it is not fulfilled according to their wishes, then they give up. Everything is bleak and dark. There is no joy. Whereas the patient person Plans, acts, but always surrenders. I am not the Savior. And I'm not the one to set the time of salvation. In my planning, if God has another plan, then I patiently wait. Patience does not mean passivity. Patience means active hope. And people who hope actively are joyful.
The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you. Among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Joy in God's surprises. On this Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, we are asked to rejoice. And we have been reflecting on how being open to God's surprising ways could really lead us to joy. At a time when we all want to control our lives, to control history, to control the, the, uh, the ways by which other people uh, should comport their lives and, uh, and themselves, we find that we are losing this capacity to be open to God's surprises. In the first reading, Israel, who deserved punishment, was given a surprise. God will not abandon them. God will rescue them and lead them home. And the image used was the poor, the blind, the deaf, the mute, the lame. They will be restored. How God surprisingly shows His love and caring for the poor and the little ones, even when they do not deserve it. But we need patience, according to the second reading. Patience, which is active hoping, just like the farmer waiting for the rain, the sun, the, the winter time to nurture the soil. Yeah, it is not passivity, but it is creative waiting, knowing that the time of harvest will come. Patience. That is what we want to tell John the Baptist in the gospel for today. John, a great, great prophet, was arrested and is now in prison. That's where our passage, gospel passage for today starts. John the Baptist in prison. So he had time to think about things, to reflect on his mission and the prophecies. He sent some disciples, his disciples, to Jesus. And the question was this, are you the one who is to come? Are you the one prophesied are you the one that Israel has been waiting for? Or should we wait for somebody else? Now, there are many interpretations of this question of John the Baptist. But one plausible interpretation is this. John, if you look at his ministry, was fiery. No? Oh, he called on fire from heaven. His speech was filled with brimstone, no? And his words were like rocks being thrown at people. 
Oh, and he had a good intention. He wanted them to face up to their guilt and to reform. But his manner was one of real, real, no, real fire, almost judgment. And probably he awaited a Messiah of that mold, of that same mold. He had baptized Jesus. He had witnessed the opening of the heavens. He had heard the voice from above, this is my son. He had seen the Holy Spirit coming as a dove on Jesus. But then, Jesus was very different from the Messiah that he had expected. He ate with sinners. He was the friend of tax collectors. He was very gentle to people. He even praised people like a centurion, a Samaritan. And so probably John the Baptist was entertaining some doubts. Is he really the one that we are expecting? How come is very different from what we had been waiting for? Surprise! And Jesus sent the disciples of John the Baptist back to him saying, Well, tell John what you have heard and what you have seen. And Jesus almost quotes the first reading. The blind recover their sight. The people inflicted with leprosy are cured. The dumb can now speak. The lame could now walk. The crippled can now walk. And the poor have the good news preached to them. Jesus is saying, look, the sign that the Messiah has come is here. Look at the poor. Look at what's happening to the poor. Look at how God loves them. This is the type of Messiah, not the apocalyptic, political Messiah that everyone was waiting for, probably even John the Baptist. You are so fixated on that you don't see the surprise of God. And so you lose your joy. But then Jesus did not say anything negative about John. He even praised John the Baptist. He said, history has not known any man born of a woman greater than John the Baptist. But Jesus says, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Who is the least in the kingdom of God? The child, the poor, those who depend on God, and most especially, Jesus himself. He is the least in the kingdom of God, who identified himself with the least. And it is in his solidarity with them that you see the surprising Messiah, the surprising salvation that only God could give. Patience, faith, opening our eyes to the poetic surprises of God, then we will be happy. You know, this is our daily experience. I know you parents, you teachers, you who are involved in community work, we are beset with so many concerns and we try our best. We plan, we invest, you, uh, you, 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 uh, you uh, uh, join other people with one good goal. How could we make life better? Not only for ourselves, but for our society, for our families, etc. We have our plans. And I have to admit, uh, like for example, once I was in Rome attending so many meetings, and in all of those meetings, we had to face some very difficult questions. And 
I had shared my ideas, I proposed things, but then later on you, you go into uh, some sort of analysis and say, did I say the right thing? Did, did it contribute to the good? Or maybe uh, we are failing? You know, all of these doubts. Because we have our plans. And it seems that those plans are not materializing. And then you entertain self-doubt. Am, am I doing the right thing? What? No? How come? Even my best ideas are not good enough, etc. No, and in one such meeting, you know, when uh, I, I was not participating anymore because of this confusion, I left the room and on the road, somebody recognized me, someone I did not know. And he said, are you Cardinal Tagle? I said, yes. He said, I just want to thank you. I listened to your YouTube reflection on the word exposed last Sunday. You really inspired me. Surprise. What a joy. Coming from God. Coming from a stranger. That's how Advent is. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. In less than two weeks, we will celebrate Christmas. And one of the most popular icons of the season, even for non-Christians, is Santa Claus. The jolly old man who goes from house to house delivering gifts to children on Christmas Eve. I think Santa Claus's gift-giving image would make more sense if we remember the inspiration behind it. Saint Nicholas, Bishop of Mira in present-day Turkey. While the good bishop was not formally canonized as a saint, since the procedure we know today came only in the 1100s, the building of the church in his honor in the 6th century by Emperor Justinian I speaks of his renown in the early Christian communities. His inclusion in the liturgy ascribed to St. John Chrysostom also testifies to the importance of St. Nicholas's witness. Our brothers and sisters in the East call him Nikolaus Ho Taumaturgos or Nicholas the Wonder Worker due to the many stories of generosity attributed to him while he was alive and of miraculous intercessions after his death. Perhaps the most popular pious legend attached to him is his charity towards a devout family. According to the story, the father had no money that may be used as dowries for his three daughters, which meant they could not marry. Learning of the situation, the wonder worker went to their house at night to drop through a small opening a purse full of gold coins. He did it quietly for three nights so that each daughter may have her own dowry. That way, the girls were saved from the likelihood of ending up in prostitution. His acts of charity became known in the East and the West, thanks to the word of the sailors who had interacted with him. This resulted in the piety of pilgrims from different Christian churches who would visit his tomb in Bari, Italy, establishing him as a figure of ecumenical relations. Pope Francis, during his own pilgrimage, said, Dear brothers and sisters, may we remember St. Nicholas 
not only for the tangible gifts we would like to receive this Christmas, but also for His charity, so that we may work wonders also through our loving relationships with others. Saint Nicholas, pray for us. We have prepared some reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we more closely associate the presence of Jesus to service of the poor? Papaano natin mailalapit ang presensya ni Jesus sa paglilingkod sa mga duka? The second point is, how can we guide the youth to find true joy in serving the poor? Paano natin magagabayan ang mga kabataan na makahanap ng tunay na kaligayahan sa paglilingkod sa mga dukha? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, Please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, we have heard Jesus speaking to us through the Scriptures. It is time to go forth and fulfill His Word. See you next week here on The Word Exposed.